chance to see it on screen because my goodness they they dropped like a sack of potatoes didn't they but regardless <laughs> you can see that the favor is currently in the way of shelby highs it is a 4v3 not only that but they have the alt economy as well you got three alts currently at the ready for shelby and only two for the side of roberson that one player already defective does get detained by the kj alt and uh, they are just kind of stuck here on a main as the rest of shelby high begin to encroach and now only one player remains and not only that but you got utopia with an odin like now now you got to be a little bit nervous because that silver odin combo on b main the wall spray is just infamous it's just it's just dirty and i don't think anyone's going to call out and tell them that this is an afk i believe that uh close stick was actually uh, disconnected from the previous round onward into this one and they're just kind of waiting on the recovery left. no one making that call but utopia may end up going and finding it they can they can do that with a recon dart and see them from distance but they're not going to expose themselves too much as they're actually told to check in mid just in case they're going to see nothing and this one ended up being at minimum a nine round first half for the Shelby Lions as they want to find maybe left. even double digits to end out this half. You really hope for the Rams that they can at least get their kill joy to come back into it. A few ultimates. I want to see where the showstopper and the thrash maybe end up. There's there's a lot of util that I just don't want left behind and unused working into the second half. Last yep, and now here we are. I mean, last round before the swap. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying it could happen, that that, that beautiful 9-3 scenario. And, you know, it's, it's, it's available if Roberson managed to take one more win on the board. But now this is as good a time as any because they have three ults at the ready for both sides here. And not only that, but there are some pretty big ultimates. I mean, yeah, you know, you're looking at the Silva ult. You got the Gecko ult, which could be, you know, can definitely be used and be utilized. But what I'm looking at right now, is the raise ultimate that showstopper that's what i'm going to be looking to uh, looking at for roberson and again in my opinion if roberson uh, are to take this next round it's going to be with the utilization of that showstopper they have got to make that count it's crazy how I've seen a lot, especially at the VCT level and onwards, this the showstopper be high priority, especially whenever we get, you, you know, that finite pick play mentality. As soon as you can put yourself up in a first blood situation, then you can kind of snowball a lot more than you can whenever you're just trying to play dead even. I saw it a lot on Lotus on Ascent. It's really no different except for where you simply want to go and execute. We're right now in the middle of a pause trying to work on a player DC to try and recover this killjoy on the side of the Rams. But yeah, you've got the thrashes have also been high priority. If you ha your prio goes immediately to what gets your confirmed pitch pick, which is definitely the showstopper, and then thereafter thrash because they can get multitudes, especially if grouped up, to just get locked down. And it's nearly a sure thing to find those big picks. And I, I maybe on later maps we'll see even more of that. But for right now, this has just been a matter of I think run it down and execute a little bit faster especially what what shelby high has been bringing to the table they look a lot more comfortable than what roberson has done relying on their front too yep and now here we are getting ready to see this last round go but again you know we had the timeout, and you know um this is a, a moment here when whenever we get these brief pauses that i like to call the monkey man and it's soca show where we get to have a, a quick moment just to banter between the two of us so real quick for the banter i gotta ask you monkey man okay le le let me hear from you uh, in your personal preference vandal or phantom where are you going Ooh, okay so i used to be a phantom lover right but now i'm a vandal advocate because mm -hmm. uh, I am otherwise just bad at my shots, but so which which it sounds which sounds backwards, right? But mm -hmm. true good aimers actually use the phantom really really well. I rely on the high like one uh, first and second bullet pen and on target accuracy to get my kills. Otherwise, you're seeing me run around like a a, a cod dweller and just hoping that I can get anything in the old chest cavity. Which I think that my current headshot percentage is like five it's not good but i've got 85 when it comes to the chest they said you know they said aim for the core i mean what, what about you do you like vandal what do you like phantom 2 well, I actually started out on the Vandal. So, again, I'm the, okay. the exact opposite of you in this scenario is that I was Team Vandal for, you know, throughout the longevity of my Valorant career, uh, or lack thereof, rather. And then uh, <laughs> I ended up switching to the Phantom mostly, uh, and it's not for the reason of uh, mostly just being... Um, 
you know any type of advantage mechanically okay. but it was because i got a cool skin for the phantom and i was like hey <laughs> i like okay. i gotta use this skin you know like i really <laughs> love this skin i want to use it so then i'm gonna start using the phantom and then uh as i started to use the phantom more and more you know i'm i'm looking of course at you know some pro scenes and you know i'm watching this the the i'm watching uh shopify rebellion play you know and i'm okay. seeing how good they are with the phantom and i was like okay let me just i'm, I'm just gonna invest in this phantom uh phantom so now i main on the phantom when it comes to like buying up for the rifles that, that's where i go i go for the i go for the phantom okay so then i need to know what's your round two you just won a pistol round what's your buy then because that's the buy up round at least minimum first half for, well i guess beginning of each half what's your kit are you a full shield inspector are you a light shield and and guardian do you do you big uh, big brain big guts play and go for a rifle we'll talk about more of that i want to know your answers but we have our final round of this first half as it finally kicks off Yep, and we're going to start things off with a trade there, one for one. Ooh. As now the trades are going to be going the way of Shelby High. As you can see, it will be the Hunter's Fury that does come out. Utopia able to find Hilosa or Hilois as they get eliminated. And now only one player remains. It's the lone KJ. And my goodness, what a round. Like right off the rip, Shelby High find four eliminations. And now the final will fall. Shelby High, they go into the second half with a 10 to 2 benefit in their favor there's something dangerous about not just the a main corridor but as well as that corner pocket cubby coming around from catwalk into tree if there is going to be an ultimate being shot by a sova that hunter's fury is just so tough to kind of really mentally map where it's going to go laterally to you as you're trying to go more longitudinally and so that caught at least two players by surprise and that's of course utopia coming up large in it but we go 10-2 and we flip all the way around and I am curious, what is what is your second round kit here at Soka? I mean, um, if you're on the side of Shelby High, then why not the same as the first? You know what I mean? And it also depends on the the agent that you are selecting. Again, I'm I I need a crutch when I'm ever in the pistol okay. rounds because again, my hit my headshot hit rate is not good, so I often go with the frenzy and you know frenzy some util. And again, this all depends on the agent that you're using because if you have an agent that has some good util, like for example, Gecko, prime example, you know you got to make sure that you can afford Dizzy. So they go with Dizzy and the Ghost. So they went all in. You know, they went all in on the on the ghost here but made sure they had enough to get the dizzy which which isn't bad but now i mean it looks as though that they couldn't recover it that's the only problem and uh is that gecko wasn't able to recover it so that dizzy looked like it was going to be one and done but it was worth one trade so it seems like they got a good roi for my economy majors out there a good return on investment Utopia, you can tell that they have been watching a few extra videos on lineups because they use that on the old octopus to try and get one that goes all the way to A off that banked wall from outside B. I don't know if it landed on target. I think it may have just kind of errantly gone somewhere. So maybe it's a lineup that they'll have to recalculate for later. But look at this retreat out of the Rams. They're all basically outside of marketplace. But otherwise, they're trying to kind of stay in a dynamic duo around B. But that decoy situation as they had put Utopia just outside side of B to make a bit of noise made this defense bite but the plant is actually on A and it's the Rams again at a detriment needing to retake well, here we go. I mean, uh, this is this is difficult here. Again, we're, we're playing in post-plant uh, retake for Roberson. And, you know, more often than not, you're going to see the players drop in from the top shelf. They were already able to get rid of the Killjoy here on Roberson. And now they're able to get rid of the Omen as well. They have the advantage. 3v2 looking for these last two lurky turkeys. And you can see already they are going to try and push through the destructible door. They throw out some util. And here comes the swing. And unfortunately for Claude, they will be eliminated as time keeps ticking away. And it looks like we have an AFK on this KJ. Last been uh been that KJ AFK for a hot minute, but that bomb will be secured and no one will be left alive except for the one that didn't even play the rest of the round. I think that the call here is that they've been unable to get glowing glow stick to come back into the game. So they're just kind of playing on to not delay what could be the inevitable. So uh as they're playing basically a player down, this 4v5 marches on in favor of Shelby High, who are two away from getting 
getting a win here for the group stage and Roberson. They're going to have to buy up if they, you know, if they don't want to have to face down 12, whatever, or 12, two and forever for the remainder of this. But we see some bulldog specters galore. It's definitely going to be aggression, aggression, aggression off this rushing push by Shelby. Yeah. And you know what? I'm digging this guardian skin. Like that is very sleek, very clean. I like it's it, nice. but yeah, just to just to once again infer back to the KJ scenario that we have going on there is where the you know clearly they're disconnected and unfortunately cannot uh, continue for whatever reason server issues. Uh, th that's the thing though, you know it happens all the time in esports and you know the Dems the rules is that you usually play on. You play on, you GG, you go next. The show must go on and that's not going to stop this jet from getting yet another ace here for Shelby High. We've seen one already and that came from Claude, but now it's going to. Be be the jet from Shelby High to get the uh, to get another ace here on Ascent. Twenty-five and seven for the jet of Shelby and uh, everyone else in a great positive kind of situation. Save one at the very bottom. Roberson, a lot of things that they want to kind of rebuild. Biggest thing that you really look into this uh, at Soka is that for high schools, you have the talent that comes in through your educational pipeline, but you don't have the same recruitment. But that doesn't take away from the talent that can exist at a higher education level. So maybe something to look for for later. This attack trying to get pushed back. Helios is just going to go out and challenge are not going to go quite into that good night they are good for two utopia finds them on the shock dart it becomes a 3v2 actually no even more than that yeah it's a 3v2 roberson still at the disadvantage defective wants to stay on site and this is going to be a difficult one that maybe shelby decides to just walk away from rotate away and it's actually just like 1v3 we have two players hanging out and spawn together yeah, and now it's just going to be a long rotation uh, all the way back around towards B. Clearly, they're going to be heading up mid. And it looks like the Rays is protecting the AFKKJ, maybe to <laughs> deny a special orb. Maybe that's the reason they're back there on the spawn. But um, for whatever reason it may be, it's not going to stop this plant from going down on towards the B site. As you can see now, look at the jet. The jet is just eyeing for the rotation. The jig is up. They know. And they're going to be making their way around, but they don't look down alley. And then this is just a cleanup here for the Jet, as that will just about do it. That is going to be 13 to 2, a victory in the favor of Shelby High. Pick Royale in a very dominating fashion. Unfortunate for the side of Roberson, but Shelby, they simply take care of business. They get the job done. And I mean, there are some games you're supposed to win. And this apparently was definitely going to be one of them. 493 ACS for the Jet of the Lions. 28 and seven. Claude trying to claw their way just behind them on from the opposite group of the Rams at 18-13. Doing a pretty bang-up job to keep their team in it, but it was just simply not meant to be. Captain Itsoka, that was our first one of the day. Big looks, last thoughts. Uh, it seemed that that was just going to be a speed run regardless of if we had 5v5 or not. I don't know. It's still somewhat of a ripperoni because we did get to see the side of Roberson come through with a couple of wins. And you know what? I still think that even if it was the 5v5, I think they could have squeaked out maybe one or two more wins. So again, it is unfortunate because granted that, you know, clearly that we got to see the side of Shelby High, you know, they popped off. They dominated. They are a great team. You're going to have to look out for them as we continue on here in the qualifiers and then, you know, further and further until we get to regionals. But with that being said, though, we still didn't get to see full peak Roberson. So I will give them the BOD. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that, you know, they possibly could have made better decisions. They could have had a better opportunity, a better chance if they had all five players without the disconnect. So again, uh, for it is what it is. Shelby High, I think they would have won regardless, but at the same time, we did not get to see Roberson at their fullest potential. So, I mean, if we're lucky, if they're lucky, I hope we get to see him again. Yeah, that's very true. There's going to be a little asterisk next to that W uh, for the side of Shelby, but still it's going to be a W all the same. And Roberson, they may only have one or two chances remaining here in group stage play because it is to get to the big bracket that ultimately drives you towards those regionals hanging out in May. But hanging out on the other side of a short break is going to be our last match of the day. It's going to be an early college rivalry between Gaston and Challenger. You don't want to miss it. More of the Vessel qualifiers will be back in just a moment.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Varsity E or Varsity Esports and STEM League Qualifier Showcase. It's group stages here. 45K, not quite unlocked for anyone, but it at least looks pretty from a distance. I'm Hell Monkey Man in the booth alongside Captain Atsoka as we work into our next match. Let's check out the results. One of these teams in Challenger with a 1-0 in group stage. That sets them in a pretty good spot. Oh, absolutely. I mean, considering how early are how early on we are in the qualifiers, you know, any win is going to boost you tremendously. And not only that, but you're going to get the momentum and the morale going into this next matchup of having won already. And it plays a huge role. I mean, in all of esports and, you know, especially Valorant, you know, that momentum, it, it can definitely make or break a team. So, again, the fact that they already have one win on the board for the side of Challenger Early College, uh, is, is, I think it's going to give them a little bit of a boost going into this next matchup. But with that being said, their opponent is pretty not is pretty top notch themselves. So again, you don't want to get too hyped up on it, but at the same time, you do have that little momentum going forward. So I'm really excited to see how this next one goes. Yeah, and we're gonna step right into it as well. I believe we're gonna find ourselves right back on the same. Stone with Astra. That's that's a lot of coverage to really keep these entry points well protected, or at least having to raw peek through. That means that the Haunt and Dizzy gotta be opening up these sites behind their jet. Oh, absolutely. And you, now, don't get me wrong. They, I don't know if it's still the case, but, you know, for a very long time, you know, that double controller meta was so relevant and so successful that um, I'm not surprised whatsoever to see it here today. 
And with that being said, I, if, if we are going to go double controller composition, then I like the ones that they chose. They chose the Astra on, on the Smokes, of course, because, again, they have a wide range of coverage. And, you know, they also have the the Nebula pulls, you know, they have the, the or the Gravity Well, rather. And so there's a lot that you could do with that. It's mostly just about coverage and control, whereas when you have the, the Brimstone, they do have the Smokes and they do have the controlling ability, but they also have high damage. They have the Molly. We love seeing Molly lineups coming from the... Uh, from the brimstone and not only that but they also have the orbital strike as well in their ultimate so they're putting out damage and they again can make plays happen so again if you're going to go double controller i think this is going to be a pretty successful composition um but you know what we'll we'll see how it plays out as we get round number one underway <laughs> Poor Chu two th uh, uh, threw two swarm grenades and both were shot before they got activated. As soon as the popcorn was about to pop, they got burned out. That's unfortunate for them as they just dropped their util. And now this recon dart finds them all sprinting onto walkways. So it looks like that B is simply going to be overran. W key as a team in total to be able to establish site. But in opposite of that, stat comes through and gets rid of two to leave us at an even Steven three. And that actually leaves both these controls controllers at a very advantageous position, but it's simply this jet that is running forward in a right click jump by white tens. Oh, you love to see it. I mean, that right that right click was, I mean, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like the greatest play ever, but it was still pretty gnarly. Now you got yourself a good old fashioned 1v1. You got the flick of the wrist trying to take on this brimstone and they will come out on top. They come in clutch. We'll get the round one win for challenger. And my goodness, they made that one look pretty well done and on the pistols too. Yeah, that was uh, Satoru not finding that infinite void to drop flick into. And in fact, they looked like they had infinite bad knees as a slow walking brimstone is just not going to be the play. And look at this one. This is OK. Th they decided not to commit to it, saving themselves maybe a, a little bit of extra cash. But flick is looking at options. They have the chance based on getting that 3-0 if they wanted to to get a phantom. But they decided to buy their util instead. And they're going to be sitting instead with a guardian for some precision kills and opportunities but this is still a put a B push and look how that's already going to be a theft of space. You have your jet walking up a main and they're going to make sure that there's no rotational thoroughfare to go through mid. And you see the, the display, not necessarily displacement, but they decided to place their nades in alleyway this time instead of trying to put them on B main. And now you have the gravity well as, uh, as well, trying to deter the push, but it doesn't. I mean, Challenger are fearless moving in onto the B side and now we'll begin to plant the spike on Boatyard. Gaston, these Gex have been able to get themselves in a great position before. And now you actually have some utility that will protect off of this plants and this is tough because you're on your eco situation stat is trying to find at least a few more status now walking it up with their brimstone there's quite a few hurt players but that turret is gonna play tattletale as tree follows with that sheriff Sotero with all of a bucky and as they look at the stairs hoping that no one's around the corner tree finds them from distance that's the first two going over to challenger ec gas and though we'll get a chance to buy up yeah, don't get me wrong, like you can make some some miracles happen with the Bucky as you know, I like to say you can either get nutty or lucky with the Bucky. But with that being said, on a brimstone, maybe not so much. I, I'm, I'm more often than not when I see plays happen with the Bucky, they're usually in the hands of someone like a raise, someone that can be a little speedy that can close the gap and really get the most out of the, the Bucky's range. So, you know, I mean, it was it was good. It was it was a hopeful try. It was wishful thinking. But with that being said, it is now a two to nil lead in the favor of Challenger. And this is going to be an opportunity for a comeback from Gaston. They should have the buying power on their side if they had saved appropriately. So let's see how this plays out as round number three is underway. They may have be on, on somewhat of a force, actually. Some guardians and some specters available, depending on what we see, because they were around 3,800 or so credits on average a piece so it's not exactly a very strong defensive position here for the gex of gaston but challenger they seem to be wanting to walk it in oh boy they're gonna put out that well and white tens just kind of stuck as they die to the mosh pit that eventually blows up stacking a drop back onto site as they swing out here from jenny they get the spike out of hand and they're waiting for a re-hit but now enya ends them and from distance that marshall just running between the legs of tree and it is just a full-on melee they're gonna get an extra plant as a free point the first four goes the challenger again <laughs> I knew this would be easy but 
Oh, there you go. I mean, that's a big round going in the way of Challenger. Again, that, that's the bonus. That's why they call it that. Because you're not supposed to win that round after winning, you know, the pistol and then round two. You're not supposed to win three in a row like that. So, again, that is a big round. That's the bonus. So, not only are they going to get three wins in their favor, but now they have the economy as well. So, they're going to be able to buy some pretty good weaponry. You see all Vandals, yet one Guardian. And I'm still wondering why Flick or Flicka... Uh, the, the, the fade on their side hasn't bought a, a shield that's a little worrying to me but let's see how it pays off as they are already to uh, they are already able to get that first elimination and now zen able to get one in the boatyard as well as they once again take b with little to no contest I mean, that was a wonderful follow, knowing that the Nightfall was going to have them deafened and that there was just no way that Sova was going to be expecting them to follow that swiftly. Zen tracked them down and did not let them have any kind of Fortress of Solitude that back there on site. So now Stat simply left on an Operator, which is a tough retake weapon, and they have to now rely on some short range or weaponry. Maybe finding an angle off here. They're going to revive for a Vandal that was dropped instead. Don't win it off the initial spray. Tens will be able to cover them down and Flick now finds one in Kai and the brimstone falling out becomes a 2v1 One operator but no the blaze storm out from around the corner oh they missed the final knife and they lose to their twin zen first one in last one out my goodness, that was looking like it was going to be the first round win for Gaston, but at the end of the day, you know, it was Zen coming in clutch in order to solidify that win. And, you know, you even look at the score count, you know, Zen isn't necessarily top fragger, but still, I mean, there's that clutch factor. And it seemed like Zen has it. I mean, they were able to close things out. They were the last player standing, going up against a blade storm, need I mind you. So, again, good on Zen to stay cool, calm, and collected in order to confirm that win for Challenger. And now they go up 4 0 in the season. Series, well, in the game, in this best of one series, and now they have the power of the purse once again on their side. Just a little bit of a util okay. dump. You, it's tough to kind of meander your way through the nebula, but they use that thrash initially to try and clear sight. Zen gets a wall bang headshot again. Steve, Scuba Steve, having to suffer at the hands of Zen, who continues to just be their rival. But this is a lot of defensive kills in trade. There's a ton of them going in favor of Gaston as Challenger's kind of left in a sneaky spot. Zen, status from just behind him off that flank angle. That's some weapon upgrades and will be the first round here for Gaston. What a cleanup crew. How was that not a thrifty? Like, I get they were, it, it was a broken buy. You know, they, they had some weaponry there. But as far as I'm concerned, that was a thrifty round. Like, granted, it wasn't all pistols. But come on. I mean, when you look at the advantage going to Challenger, it, it definitely feels like a thrifty round. I mean, the last two eliminations came off the end of a sheriff. Okay, so uh, I'm, and as far as I'm concerned, that was a thrifty round. Well done to Challenger. A much needed round win. And they they got it with literally reaching to the bottom of the bargain bin and making it happen. So let's see if Gaston can continue to apply the pressure to Challenger and maybe pull out another round. I mean, every every weapon can kill. It's just about how well it can in the moment and in the right hands with the right ideas. So statics, making sure to just make use of this space. And look, what this is what they've done every single time. They've been given up a main. And then they run down, they take that mid position. But that's also a massive LMG in the hands of Scuba Steve, taking advantage of what all hey, good Sovas there. do. And that's dog play. But another knife call in as little as three rounds pushed here. They're trying to get over that bone house. And again, it is Zen that is the first to pick Scuba Steve. But there's a lot of extra bullets being sprayed out from Marketplace. This has been a very expensive run down into sight. And you know what? And I have a little bit of foresight here and some spicy takes that we're going to wait for those just from the plays that I've already seen. But we're going to continue on here in this 3v2. And you can see the spike already taking away in the favor of challengers. So, you know, even through the adversity, they managed to find their way onto site and get the spike planted. Now you can see it is going to be stats that is trying to find their way into site going towards Boatyard. They have to go up high. They see the omen and they take damage themselves as the spike continues to tick away. I thought Aesthetics was actually going to get the wall bang off of that, but then you have two hanging out all the way in deep side house, and they may be playing for life instead for some exit kills. They say they tell Satoru to go at least look over. That is a very thick brimstone, and they're just hanging out ADS straight on the stairs. They're able to walk away with at least one big frag, and then everyone else falls. A fifth 
going to Challenger as Gaston leaves only one rifle in hand. But through the first half of the first half here at Soka, it's been a much, it's been kind of similar to our first uh, match of the day, very dominant in its feature. Yeah, and you know, this is one reason why I like, and again, this is going to be the spicy take I was telling you about earlier, because so far, we are seeing Challenger coming out very successfully. They're, they're up 5-1, right? But one of the rounds that they did lose, and they nearly ran into trouble in that previous round as well, it came from taking so much damage from the KJ utility and some of the Silver utility. Uh, and not to mention, Brim also has a good bit of damage in their utility as well with the mollies. So if you really want to avoid a lot of that entry damage, this is where KO can be a tremendous help again by throwing out the ko dagger you're able to nullify uh, some of those abilities so if you can actually land the ko dagger on the kj you don't have to worry about those entry nades when you go in you don't have to worry about the nano swarm so a, a challenger wouldn't have taken as much damage as they did or maybe not even have dropped that one round you know just you know if a little bit of hindsight 2020 if they had brought in uh brought the ko in but with that being said they are still playing extraordinarily well as a, just a flick of the wrist from zen is able to pick up another a limb and that takes away the biggest threat on the map against them in statics, as they're not going to be able to enter off of the Prowler and the Dizzy combination. They see them over the top, and that gives a ton of information over to Zen. They go into Heaven, but they get taken out via Sheriff from the rival that they have been putting to the floor more often than not on B side. Scoop of Steve finds them. They know someone is lurking from just off angle. Enya hunts them away, and as they still contend to be up in Heaven, they, they may very well stay as one is just outside of Tree. Enya will fall just as they put down the dark cover from Chu taking a bite out of him and now the lockdown gets expended Chu better watch out they're gonna be tracked down from behind that's tree that can get rid of that ultimate what an expensive position scuba steve off of this duel turns into a 1v2 my goodness and what a shot coming from scuba steve and now they have that valorant in hand i don't even know if they've always had the valorant there i mean the vandal but with that being said they're still able to come in clutch i mean being able to use the sidearm and the main to come in and clear sight out do they have enough time no they do not but you still gotta tip your hat to scuba steve they came in with some pretty clean head clicks there at the end I, man, I, I will tip my snorkel to Scuba Steve, but I feel for them as well because they came off Spike just just a micromillimeter before having it. And if they had halved it just as they went to go and win that, that last duel, they might have been able to get it as well to actually win out the round. That's the so close yet so far defined in a single shot for Scuba right there. They do have their Hunter's Fury online. And they can be able to really utilize that in a big way. You do also have the Brimstone Orbital Strike, but it's Statics. They get rid of Zen. That is a massive pick to slow down Challenger. Yep, and once again, here we are at B Main. This seems to be the favorite for Challenger. I mean, we have just seen them get a win over there on towards the A site, but more often than not, it's going down on the boatyard. And here is Chu with the Bucky trying to see if they can get a read. I mean, good luck to them, but you can already see that rotation beginning to make its way out as they're going to take the long way around, and it looks like they could go for A here. Yeah, that's at least the initial draw. And look. They, they may find actually the brimstone kind of creeping up. They find them on that rotation. They don't see them confirmed outside main, and this is going to force Gaston to have to bite somewhere. White tends all the way back and to put at least the nebula out. They're going to put the well away as well, but now as they put the haunt down, Tens is just calling for reinforcements. It's a 5v4. They have the main advantage. Do they have anything for retake? They deny the, at least the default plant as they're going to put out the Hunter's Fury. So that's going to delay them, but they know the plant itself is already down. So it's a bit of a step behind. Still got the numbers advantage if they can find it, especially as they now find it by two. Here. Yeah, now you see, you think you got the numbers advantage, but you can't forget about oh. Dizzy and Wingman. Those are the MVPs. Oh. And now you can see Spring Wave or Sprig Wave able to get an elimination onto Statics. And now that player advantage is really going the way of Challenger here in this 3v1 now in the post plant as Tree, thanks to the elimination feed, was able to put it into the brim. And now Scuba Steve, they are running for the hills. Oh, having a sprint, Scuba Steve has been killed far too many times for them to not want to keep up with this rifle. And so knowing that this is a lost venture, they're gonna they're just going to chill all the way back. And you got to feel, again, for Steve, because this has been a uh, fairly effective player. Uh, they've simply received the, the, the pointy stick that is Zen a time or two often whenever they've been going down into B. But now 13 and 6 for this defense for Statics. And 
you would think seeing that that this is a bit more of an even venture but that is the one of the lone shining lights for this somewhat inconsistent gaston defensive and challenger i mean they they're they're being very patient they're looking for singular picks to kind of run off of default or otherwise and then just making them, them themselves known and it looks like they're going to try and crash a early but they don't force the issue and you know what? I don't blame them either. They've had a majority of their success on the B site. And yes, again, you know, they've managed to come through on A uh, a time or two. But I, I just feel like Challenger just, they make plays happen on the boatyard. And <laughs> I don't know. I just want to see them go back to it. Meanwhile, you do have a Sataru on the Marshall who does get eliminated. And I'm not surprised whatsoever. Sataru has been pushing up just a little bit too far these past few rounds on the brim. And even with these budget buys like the Marshall. So it was only a matter of time before they got punished. That's them trying to kind of mirror what Statics was able to do, and I feel like they just kind of got too comfortable replicating the same thing. Flick gets rid of Statics, which is going to be pretty impactful to establish full sight control. The Haunt is going to identify anyone that's hanging out up in heaven, and they just kind of push their back through that dark cover. Tens held by the grasp, and this is a rough situation. They have to bounce away, and not being allowed to play the mosh pit eventually explodes, and poor Tens, that Astro never stood a chance. That was a great use of the fade util along with um, along with the the nade coming from gecko My goodness, what a play in order to solidify that round win and honestly the play of the game had to be that Astro LM again You get the fade util and then you get the the gecko nade as well And it just you can't go anywhere. It was it was tragic and we had to watch it all unfold It was literally like, like watching a mouse in a trap <laughs> mouse on a tramp on a trampoline as they're just jumping to their death and it's just the gack on your shoes that eventually ignites and explodes so uh i don't think that's the most humane way to get rid of rodents and pests but it is at least one way if you are challenger eight and one into round number 10 this squad simply trying to take advantage and look how they're just Chilling, just waiting for maybe counter aggression to come on up. Flick gets caught looking up. Tens gets him with the old Wild Wild West weapon. Yep, yep, they do. The the good old peacekeeper, right? As meanwhile, thanks to the elimination feed, we got to see Tree once again put it into that brim. I bet you they were peeking, man. And look what happened to you. Now you got Spring Wave here, able to get one on Statics. That is a big pick. They go for the swing. White Tens on these Sheriff clicks. My goodness, they find another. A Vandal or Phantom is just too much, too unnecessary for them. Oh my goodness, a third. This entire round could end up being just Gaston's as they're looking for their fourth, finally put to rest by Zen. But the flank comes through. Chu finds Enya. That's going to be a weapon upgrade. And now it's Zen by themselves, but they're just stuck in there with him. And Chu gets off the wall bang to finish him off. It was a two-man swing. But that first 3K acquired by White Tins, head and shoulders above all others, is what gave Gaston that chance. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. I forgot what the name of the gecko nade was, and I had to Google it. It is Mosh Pit, right? That's the name yep. of it, Mosh Pit. Okay, yeah. Yep. I completely <laughs> forgot. I mean, again, it's like I said, you know, <laughs> the last time I was here on Ascent, it was the KJKO combo that was the meta. So, again, I have to catch up on my gecko lore. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know it's a nade, you know, but the thing is, is that it's an insta kill. If you get caught in it, it's not like the Nano Swarm or, you know, the Molly from Brim where you, you know, you continually take damage and then you know you run away if you get caught by the nade it's boom one and done you are done so yeah <laughs> gotta put some respect on mosh pit had to at least get their name but once again we have a timeout which means it's time for the monkey man and Soka show quick 20 seconds right off the rip gotta go for it right here okay uh monkey man okay so we're on a scent i gotta ask you how do you feel about the spike differential is it a 50 50 offense defense or does it favor one side or the other which spike which side of the spike is favored here on ascent offense or defense Ooh, i'd like to say offense because and that's mostly beaten uh it used to be a lot more defense in my in my idea but because we've seen so many teams being able to really just they, they know how the executes go but the numbers of, uh, advantage is massive you can still swing hard to site and win five v twos that's just how the site is really defined or these this map is defined i'd say the attacker side still has that leaned favor but i mean challenger is really kind of showcasing that right now we got to see that on the previous map and 
it's simply about uh, knowing that you can just crash to site, especially when you have players like Zen. The Dizzy is going to force Statics to have to stick, uh, take a step back just as soon as they see the doppelganger do it. And then that Mosh Pit taking away at least half that door entry. They put the Util down. Challenger making it difficult, but it's a 5v5. Everyone stayed alive. Yep, just like the BG staying alive as you can see all of Challenger have successfully made it to the boatyard and now they're trying to spray through the wall. I've seen this work, okay? That actually works. If you know that all five players over there in boatyard, you can shoot through the wall and find one. Statics, however, they're going to come from the side on the walkway. They find two. Let's make it three! Is now Tree has to operate from inside the smoke. They call in their little helper, the wingman, but it's not going to do them any good. They only have ten health to their name, but going up against four other players and that will do it gaston comes in with a big retake here in round 11. this is what was missing from our previous Last match having a fifth half. player to begin with but also <laughs> the possibility of an 8-4 and we looked to it we ended with 10-2 and there was some momentum being built by both helios uh, uh, helios as well as claude in opposite now you're maybe stringing together three rounds in a row with two streaks of four acquired by challenger a winnable feature all the same here from gaston Got to see what more they can get from it. It's been the Flick and Tree show, which sounds like a weird cartoon on Adult Swim. I swear it might be in the future, but Statics trying to make it cinema here in this last round of the first half. Uh, we take those. That is a solid two-piece coming from Stacks, uh, uh, Statics. And I'll, I'll be completely honest there. I was not expecting them to walk with, out of that alive. I mean, they only have 13 health. They're in the red. They're in the danger. Uh, Augusta Wind could take them out at this point. But my goodness, what a way to start things off. And at this point, I feel like Challenger, you know, being that they are up in an 8 currently, they are up in an 8-3 split. I think they should have been a little bit more prepared for that. I feel like, you know, uh, Statics has really been up in their grill in a lot of these beginnings. And uh, again, I'm just surprised they weren't more prepared as now Chu, thanks to the elimination feed, is going to put an end to Omen, who I guess tried to use their ult to get a cheeky plant onto the B site. Yeah, and that, that's, that spike is way behind enemy lines, and there's not a single piece of util cleared, and Zen is at 21 HP. As much as I believe in Zen, there is a giant veil of purple stars in front of them, and that's going to delay them even further with only 30 seconds to execute. Two here left. in logs on Molly set to be used to make it at least painful to have to walk through, but Zen gets a wall bang headshot and another one to take out Statics and Satoru. That turret trying to just take what's left of Zen, 3 HP. The dream is alive, but they've got only seconds to go. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be any good here. I mean, they just don't have time. They could try and make it happen. I mean, if they managed to pull this off, it would be absolutely a miracle. They tried to go for the blame storm. It's not gonna be any good, and that will just about do it. With four seconds left on the board, Gaston managed to take out the final Switching two side. opponents there on Challenger and get themselves that eight four split. And I think I not necessarily speak for everyone, but an eight four split, I mean, we definitely take those. Yeah, we uh, we're we're here for uh, solid competitiveness for each of our teams, and not just being railroaded into a into an L. That's not what you want to see. You want to see these students really get moment their moments to shine. In fact, putting the best foot forward to a possible W, especially when it's heading into at the end of group stages, or at least the midway of group stages, and what's going to be that big bracket on the other side to qualify for regionals. A lot of these students could be their first time competing, could be the first time. Being on these teams and they're trying to make the most of it in a massive way challenger they're going to take their turn on to defense see if it's as difficult or as easy as they think it is and uh gaston i want to see how they run it down look how far they've already sent uh i believe statics up into mid I mean, sure, why not? They've been getting picks time and time again at the entry. And look again, Zen was not prepared, and they took a shot to the chest for it. And in the pistol round, that could be huge. I mean, they're already in the red as far as health is concerned. Uh, but thanks to the elimination feed, you can see Chu, they're able to get one on Flick. As now it looks as though they are going to be forcing the issue onto A main. You do have statics coming through from Tree. And Scuba Steve, thanks to the feed, able to find one on Inya, the Omen. As now it is a 5v3 advantage. Make it a 5v2 as now Statics comes through with a two piece, and uh, I think it's all but over here in the pistol round. It will be Gaston to take the round. Statics 
They initially put a ton of that damage onto Zen, and then they found the follow-up flank to uh, to jump up into heaven. No retake to even be jumped down with as uh, Scuba Steve and the rest of the squad out here just just finding big picks. I mean, it was Chu initially that got rid of Flick, and Flick, I think we talked to them a lot, how those Nightfalls gave them just a clean entry to really kind of springboard Zen onto those B-sites multiple times. And now Gaston is taking their turn, and they're going to be finding this buy-up that into an ecoed defense here with challenger so challenger is gonna have to overcome all the learning curve that gaston was dealing with and look how they went for the 4-1 split leaving sprig wave with just a bucky and util to protect them off that gamble step but at the same time, you don't have to worry about that KO coming in and nullifying all your nades and all your util. So you, if you're a spring, uh, Sprig Wave, you can hold sight by yourself, especially, you know, the KJ. This is why they are the meta sentinel in more instances, especially here on Ascent, because they can hold sight by themselves if they have all of their utility. So I don't blame them at all. And not to mention, if you're playing close quarter on B main with a Bucky, yeah, that's definitely one hit worthy right to the dome piece. But that ended up being all of an early rotation. They got all of Challenger to bite Sprig Wave, connect, uh, re really protecting this connection from main. But Plant will go down. And it was, in fact, A all along. They got all four players that were initially here to just run away from it. And now it is a 5v5 retake situation. Gaston has a couple of very, very hurt. But it's a remainder of classics in hand for Challenger. I want to see maybe they walk it in with some of this utility. You can get the wingman to at least run out from heaven. But Scuba Steve buried here in hell. And there you have that stinger that can just be so fast shooting. Wingman will clear corner, not around box, but they know where everyone else is. And that's going to be to Jenny and then some. But Scuba Steve buried out deep. They actually are finding a very solid retake here. Swarm Grenade is going to be used early. Sprig Wave gets it with a Bucky. It's a 1v3. They're just walking into it. Why? That's Chu that walks it out with four. Oh man, I wish we could call that play of the game just because it was literally just all KJ at the end there. I mean, they're running into the Nano Swarm and then they're getting picked off by the Spectre. No one decided to look in A main to see that someone was there delivering some outside damage. I wonder where these Nano Swarms are coming from. It's almost like there's a KJ that's still alive. But regardless, it is going to be a very clutch play there coming from Chu in order to solidify that win. And now look at this. What was once a four round deficit has now been cut in half to only two. And there's no bonus round to be acquired here either off of that buy-up. So, you know, they gave their life there. The timer was coming down very fast. They had to commit to maybe going for the defuse. So the one of the best case scenarios, if you're not going to win, is get nearly every single weapon off the board. So Challenger will get their weps on this defensive position. And Static's already down-checking long form of mid which is where they've really been owning this position to allow them to kind of transverse through this map. The spike is heavily leaned towards B. Can they get the rotation to bite? Zen gets rid of statics. That is huge, especially off that tree angle. Might force the hand of Gaston to go over to B instead. Well, we'll see. I mean, that is a good first pick, and Challenger really needs it before this game gets out of hand. I mean, they're almost able to equalize on the side of Gaston, and, you know, now that they were denied the bonus, this is a better time than any for Challenger to really try and apply some of that pressure as they do have a little bit of a bonus uh, when talking about the weapon purchase, but White Tens coming through with the Phantom, able to find one in the mid, and that is a big pick now for Gaston, and this game is starting to really come down to the wire as Tree now has to get out of dodge before they get eliminated that, oh they see two swinging in the door will already drop Ten's gonna be running around the corner and that dizzy gonna get used and it actually protects tree just long enough the wingman will clap his hands but he gets shut down just before the overture satoro right around the corner they're gonna be separated from spike the thrash will get used just to secure the round and challenger bites back in a big way do we get knifed do we get knifed no they're just chilling okay so <laughs> tree finds four well, there you have it. I mean, it, it has really been Tree here stepping up in a major way. I mean, look at their elimination count, 19 to 11. Statics, on the other hand, 21 and 11. And now we get another timeout. So you know what that means? It's time for more of the Hail Monkey Man and it's Soka Show. <laughs> All right, Monkey Man, here we go. Right off the rip. Best skin bundle in Valorant. Go.
Oh man, all right. So I stuck with this for one for a long time. It comes down to two. My first love was the Oni skin set. Love mm -hmm. that set. It Fair. continues to be it continues to be one of my favorite vandal sounds. Opposite of that, not by sound, but by Here. design, because I'm a huge Doom fiend, is prelude to chaos. Here. I love Doom. Here. And that one just mm -hmm. tickles my funny bone. What about you? Okay, now you see one for just yeah. pure perspective and the second one purely out of bias in nerd culture. Okay, okay. so number one, I got to give it to the RES, the Radiant Entertainment okay. System bundle. The, for those who aren't familiar with Radiant Entertainment System, it is the arcade bundle, simply known as like the video game bundle. You know, it's like yeah. classic 8-bit games. And, you know, that to me is like the best bundle in Valorant. However, my own personal biases, I love the Xeno Hunter bundle. And uh, for those that are wondering, that is the Phantom skin that made me switch with the heartbeat sensor on it on and, and everything just because i am a big fan of the alien franchise i love the aliens movie from the 1980s i consider it one of the best sci-fi movies sci-fi horror ever made so okay. when they when, when they came out with the xeno hunter bundle i was like i knew that i i needed to get that heartbeat sensor it is just so <laughs> awesome it, it was it was love at first beat ne it was habit. <laughs> Well, they sent out the Prowler, they sent out the Grasp already, so a lot of extra util, especially because the Honk got used, already kind of lending out this fade into nothing but gunplay. Sprig Wave trying to cover them from that boathouse position as the Owl Drone will get used quite early, going to be able to drop the door. And Satoru, all the way with this Bucky, they land a connection, but it's not quite skeet shooting. Not everyone will die from that long distance shot, and that's going to be Chew that will get a weapon upgrade into that Oni Phantom, but they die instead to Flick, who's winning off of Stellar Gunplay, and there's just not enough bullets and not enough accuracy from a Stinger from that position. Scuba Steve eventually gets rectified by Zen. Double digits obtained here by Challenger. <laughs> a little bit of fun fact about yours truly, Captain Atsoka. I used to completely despise the Stinger. Like okay. with, with wholeheartedness, I used to hate the stinger so much. I would I would constantly pun on it all the time because I thought it was like the most wild card weapon. Like sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. It was, it was just it, it seemed very inconsistent, and it was just an utter annoyance. Like I I barely got killed by it at all. But when trying to use the stinger, I was like I can't do anything with this. But you know, <laughs> as the times went on, the changes some changes were made. I have grown to put some respect on the stinger. I, I have I have come around. It's still not my favorite weapon but i can at least put some respect see i uh i used to call it the tickler and that's exactly what's happened to the feet of scoop steve and it was because it just never seemed to kill anyone and then weirdly enough i put a challenge on myself to only ads burst fire with it and i started getting more kills Sco uh, statics simply not having to burst anything except onto site they gave it a spring wave and then covered down by white tens as they get flick off this position, the lockdown getting used by Gaston to clear the site wide open and, and form some pressure. Statics has already infiltrated all the way into this uh, the spin side of this defensive side spawn, and now you got to watch your back. And Zen with a nice little pop shot there onto Satoru, and now they have to watch the flank as they manage to do so successfully. It is now going to be a 3v2 retake, three of which are in heavy damage. Two from Gaston, the Sova, and the Astra are in the red, literally one shot. Meanwhile, you do have the one from Challenger, that jet that is one shot, but they have the Blade Storm. They have their ultimate in hand, and now that's all they have, as it will be White Tins to get rid of Tree as the spike continues to tick away. They are just going to save for next and you know what i necessarily don't blame them now they could get some exit frags and that's actually what ends up happening gaston loses their guns they get the round they go all in i want to look at the eco right now they're gonna have at least two that can full buy and maybe even with chew can share the love around but it's gonna be a timeout right here and i don't blame challenger because gaston has gotten a little bit pesky to have to get rid of they know that there is one big weapon out of the way but uh this is this is this is kind of go time for challenger to try and end this out in a streak Okay, here we go. More Hail Monkey Man and Atsoka show. We already know what the timeout is going to be. Okay, what is your most hated map in Valor and why is it Ascent? Oh, man. Okay, because I just played it too much. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, come on. It, it literally is the, the one that I've just seen too often. It's like y you can go to your favorite vacation spot, but then you're like, wow, we've only ever gone to you know the arcade like 18 times in a summer. I'm kind of over it. Uh, I'd say that this, uh, this sits in the same position as Breeze, though. Ascent, I can I actually stand Breeze. more than Breeze. 
Oh no, I love Breeze. Yeah. I love Breeze even before the changes. So much okay. fun. I, I, it's because it's so radically different. The reason that I like it, for the same reason people don't like. I said it's the same thing over and over again. It's bland. It's boring. Breeze, you know, it's literally just like a, mon a monkey wrench. There's chaos. There's a little chaos to Breeze, and to me that yeah. that makes it a little bit more enjoyable uh, for myself. But if you were to ask me what my most hated map is, it is of course going to be Ascent, <laughs> for the one reason that we've just spent too much time here. However, prefix. It was Fracture. Ooh, I actually liked Fracture on the du the double pipeline outside of the dish. I love that one. We're gonna see this entry, and we're gonna talk more about that in a moment. Stacks knowing that tree is just around the corner in tree, but they can't get them from beyond the nebula, and that's actually not gonna be a trade. They simply walk it out, walk back, play for life. And there's tons of util to try and protect this challenger already coming up off of that timeout with a big play. And that stun finds only one, but not the two that are walking out from heaven. And take a look at this. I mean, the spike is ticking away. So at least they got spike money, you know, bare minimum, as the trades are going into the favor of challengers. Now Zen, thanks to the feed, is able to find one. And they get the spike halfway on the defuse. That is huge in any given scenario, as now you can see they're trying to bait and switch some of these picks. Chu, able to find one. And now here comes Zen, able to find another. And only one player still remains. It's a 1v1. They try to stick, and it will be Chu who comes in clutch for the second. Second time in the post plant, Gaston manages to come through with a win. Oh, wow. Chu clutching up, clenching their teeth, and just taking a shot and standing their ground in front of Zen, who tried to just take on the fist fight, both they and Tree, at 20 bombs apiece. But it's been Chu who's really been the clutch master to help out Statics, who finds first entries and first bloods more often than not. Challenger? off that timeout it initially looked like they were in a great position but now their greatest fear is starting to make a headway as gaston is finding some sparks of life here as we round into round number 19 and they're just they're kind of down checking into this default but look at static separated from the rest of the pack and the not to mention as well, you know, that uh, that economy is going to start to affect Challenger at some point if they don't start reigning in now. But it is going to be an early trade again. Both Jets are able to find one elimination now. Look at Statics showing no fear, running right into guard and able to find Omen. And now Gaston have an opportunity to force Challenger into a save round. The plant down, playing from distance. They do have that wall if they want to. Sprig Wave gets rid of Satoru. And so Statics will just hang out on top of Jenny. This nebula makes it the most difficult thing to actually peel away from the wall. It doesn't allow you to extend because that cloud ends just where the wall does as well. So you don't get any extension towards double box. One from tree, one from heaven, Zen. Ready for every single target. The Owl Drone is going to give them some extra intel, and that's going to be a four, making a five, an ace by Statics. And that's Gaston, one away from the tie, going to round 20. That is a big ace there coming from Statics. My goodness, they are on the come up. And not only that, but look at the economy. It is now gone for the side of Challenger. Much like my hairline, it is in a recession. I mean, <laughs> right now, Challenger looking a worse for wear in the monies, and they're going to be forced into a save round. And we had even mentioned it. I was saying it in rounds prior. If Challenger continues to let Gaston come back, they're going to be forced onto the save. And here we are. And this should all but guarantee an equal game 10 to 10, unless we get to see the thrifty round. We'll see. This is going to be a moment of pause and just a moment of encapsulization for the moment because if you are gassed and you want to take your first pick and run with it, Spike out in mid, that actually could be the death knell depending on how bad of a situation it goes. A lockdown gets used to repel the attack on B, but good news for gas and these Gex, they have this one over towards catwalk instead enya has to have some good patience try to level this one off into a headshot and try and make it a detriment to push up into this position a five-man rush over to a could give them great results but they've propositioned just to look for anyone that wants to be defensively minded enya gets two chu and satoru go down that's massive Off of the swing one more time, and Challenger 
They're going to be facing right down. They can actually recover that spike on the side of gas. And as they jump with it, and White Tens will try and cover their retreat, realizing that one option is gone as the next one is trying to run its way upward. And it looks like B site will be the main choice. Statics on the immediate turn, finding them with Util in hand. And at Soka, this is this is all gone wrong for Challenger where it was looking so right. Absolutely, because now you're looking at a thrifty round here. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, the the point of no return, I think, is when Statics managed to get their hands on a Vandal. <laughs> I mean, at that point, that's that's when it all went sideways, right? I mean, Statics has just been on point with all of their shots. And, you know, that's how you win thrifty rounds. You have got to get those weapons from the hands of your opponent and into your own. And Statics, as soon as they found the Vandal, I mean, it was just it was just all gas and no brakes. I mean, look at them go to work so clean as now they get the final elimination. And just like that, that is a big... Big thrifty round going the way of Gaston. I don't, I don't care what what the you know the in in game announcer says. That, that's a thrifty round. All they had was a Bucky, and they still managed to get the win. That that should be a thrifty round. It's a thrifty in my heart. <laughs> I mean, and, well, they were they were the, they were the ones that actually played up from. No, no, no. It was Challenger that was on only Bucky because they were they they had the worst eco. I, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was because it, because Gaston's been gaining so much gas. It's been all gas, no breaks. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. I wasn't used I wasn't yeah, yeah. used to seeing Challenger without money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that, that was the that first is, time. Yeah, that, that's the first time in a long time that these guys have been at a deficit, and now this is the first time in a long time that we've been tied four in a row, six of the last eight. You're gonna use this uh, this uh, bail from the start, this uh, uh, this Astro Ultimate, to knock off most of this position, but it was the immediate clear of one. They may have to think otherwise. Static's gonna try and find this engagement. They find first contact in India as a 4v4. My goodness, Statics is just playing on another level right now. They are locked in. As you can see, they make their way through the Cosmic Divide, and they're able to get rid of Tree. Big elimination to get rid of the top frag from Gaston, as now the spike will get planted. You have Zen on the other side of the wall here, looking for a wall bang, and they get nada. Zen takes out the wall. Satoru. Is just gonna at least down check and make sure that they're there. Sprig wave clears them out and statics with a fourth, looking for another ace to clear the round. That tailwind will be used up. And now they just raw peak. It's an ace to get the Gex on top. This is the first lead that they've had the entirety of this matchup. And what was looking so bleak at eight and one on that opposite end for them on defense, they're rending a similar result. You asked me a bit ago at Soka, which one's the stronger side? I think attack is really standing above all others. 36 bomb, by the way, from Statics. I was getting ready to say, I don't know if it's so much the attacker side as it is just statics. I mean, they <laughs> they were clicking heads on defense too, but I mean, they're the only one to drop a 30 bomb. And you know what? By the end of this, I would not be surprised if they drop 40. They need four more eliminations. They got two rounds if in their favor to get it done. I mean, if Challenger come back and answer back again, then it's all but guaranteed they're going to drop a 40 piece. So let's see if they're yeah. going to be able to do so as Gaston, as you mentioned, for the first time in this game, have a lead. And it's so late in the game as well. Yeah, this is that deep term. Statics, they get rid of Zen. Huge weapon uh, in the arsenal to get rid of for the side of Challenger. Now they have to rely on, can they get this Thrash online? Use something with it. You have a Hunter's Fury for post-plant just to be able to protect Ecstatics. They don't recognize that someone is actually deep in that marketplace position. Enya is able to get two. They're looking for a third. Stax is going to play for survival instead. Cloudburst behind them. They're going to walk away with it. They do have that spike, but it's actually still cut out on main. You have one deep into B site, and Stax is going to try and help and clear that kill joy out of the way. But Sprig Wave instead is just as lethal. Gets them out. It becomes a 2v3. Make it one. And you have Chu that has to clutch up for the third time this match. I was about to say, if anybody's going to be in this clutch situation, you would want it to be Chew, but, you know, at the end of the day, you got Thrash in your back pocket. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard to clutch that up, no matter who you are, even for Chew, who has already managed to clutch up twice. But granted, hold on, those two clutches were on A site. We were on B. I think that's the reason. I think that's what okay. happened. Okay, yeah. all right. If it's not, if it's at, you know, not the beginning of the alphabet, then it's just too far. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Alpha so and now beta right there. <laughs> so okay, so Sprig uh, made uh, made themselves a menace against Statics, and because Statics looked like they were ready to full clear this site, they told their team to just kind of follow them onto it, and then Chu ended up being the last per person alive. And Statics actually is like he uh, gave them a, a chance. Uh, gonna have at least a look at possibly going to forty, but we're tied at eleven apiece. 
We could have an overtime. Depends on who hits 12 first, and that's really going to be the meat and potatoes of the situation. Because uh, whoever gets to that really is going to be a huge place of advantage. This just might be, you know, my oversized self thinking, but now I really want meat and potatoes. Hell but yeah. regardless, you know, here we are. Round number 23 underway. And of course, none other, none other than statics are going to rush into this A site here, oh. the alpha site, as they just turn spray and they manage to find tree. But actually, it was Chew with the help, of course, of statics in order to find that alum. And now pushing right on through is no, they're not able to confirm. How do you not confirm that elimination? My goodness, is now Sprig Wave from up on high is able to deal out a good bit of damage innies is able to find one as well the omen from up on top again this is going to be the classic heaven drop and look how much damage is done to the kj and the brim on the side of gaston you're basically fighting a two and a quarter versus two and a third and challenger in that capacity is still down a man there's still active guns online regardless of how much hp you have as long as it's one it matters and may come back to bite them depending on if zen can get these big picks but no they eventually do fall white tens is going to get them here from out and jenny and you got that intel so they're good for their second the bomb is ticking much more swiftly they could actually fall away watching themselves their teammate was going to give up their life and now they just use all three shots got a full commit into this swing scuba steve is going to clutch it up everyone dies but what matters the most here at soka gaston match they are the first ones here on match point yeah that they are and now they only need one more round to get the dub and pull off quite an impressive comeback to say the least i mean like you had mentioned at one point in time this was at an eight to one split uh in the favor of challenger and then it just got turned on its head but my goodness statics still too shy of that 40 bomb and I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a 40 bomb drop in in Valorant in a Valorant competitive setting. Not to say, you know, online, you know, you're playing your rank matches. Yeah, sure, maybe. But in a in a match like this for the qualifiers for Vessel, no, I've, I've never seen a 40 bomb. I saw two players, each one on each side, get 50 bombs in a, a 38 round bind match. That We'll talk to that one later. Oh but, my goodness. <laughs> but the fact, simple fact is that Statics is definitely forcing the issue. The they're going to try and updraft. They're going to at least go for the cloud burst and get this door down. Get their team a chance, a moment. But they're going to be shot from behind. They're going to be sprayed. They're going to be spammed. And this is an eco because of the Bucky and the Marshall. There's not a lot of weapons in the back pocket of Challenger. And yet, they're still finding impactful value. And now you're stuck behind this boathouse situation. You're being squeezed from both sides. It's a 3v4. And it's just Satoru that is stuck out in main. But White Tins in the game. They're in this house and looking for sprays. And they're actually finding big impacts. They're going to run with that spike. They're going to go towards A. Yeah, I don't blame them either. I mean, yeah, you managed to hold them off, but at the same time, if you do abandon B right now, then you're going to give Flick in the KJ a chance to do exactly that, pick up Vandals. And that was the one thing that I was worried about for Gaston is that, you know, they drop these these two players early, but you also drop their left. weapons. So you're giving those weapons over to Challenger now, and they're going to be able to, to possibly come in clutch. You know, I mean, you're looking at a 2v3, right? But the Astra is in low health. So again, like as you had mentioned earlier, maybe it's a 2v2 and a quarter <laughs> so toru holding their molly like it's an ar which i appreciate in multiple ways but you have no extra ultimates except for this cosmic divide which is already used they're going to use that molly early just to keep them off the haunt tagging only one they know that someone is hanging out from behind that Ginny, and that is in fact the brimstone sprig wave calls it up and Flick clears him out. 2v2. This is trying to get to OT. Sprig Wave. They look to the recon dart. And now the stun goes on to both of them. It's going to be a final finish. White Tins and Scuba Steve combined. No overtime. No bonus Valorant. Get it done in regulation. It takes 24. But Gaston Gex, they finish it. They win the match. And my goodness, what a comeback. I mean, that is a, a true victory through and through there. They 100% had to put in work for that. And it just goes to show that you never give up. It doesn't matter what the deficit is. The game's not over until someone hits 13 and then wins by two. Or, or at the bare minimum, win. yeah, yeah, you got to win by two no matter what, yeah. I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Math is mathing. But regardless, the game's not over until it's over. You know, that's the point I'm trying to make here. So, again, a big shout out to Gaston coming back from a seven-round deficit. And even furthering the point that at an 
at halftime and an eight and four split, we definitely take those. I mean, those lead to wins right there. And again, uh, Gaston just truly impressive. I mean, and they showed the mental fortitude of what it takes to be a real esports competitive player, to be a true talent, is being able to make adjustments, adaptations while you're in the match. I can't tell you how hard that is to do as a former esports competitor myself. It is so hard to make those adjustments, to make changes in the middle of a match. Normally, you, you wait for the match to be over, you go back, you watch the VOD, you take notes, and then you make challenges in the next practice. To be able to do that while in a match, it just speaks volumes to the amount of talent we have here at Vessel. It really does. And we want to do at least one last showcase, show the scores of what those... But that is all that we have today. This time around, it's been awesome to hang out with you, Captain Atsoka. I was a stand-in for Pyro, who may be joining us in later term. But our awesome producer, in Brian, was also pushing the buttons behind the scenes and showcasing everything to you guys. We implore you to look at all the awesome socials down below. Join us here with Vessel GG, all the YouTube. There's a ton of conferences currently doing their play. Big regional qualifiers will be coming up here soon. But for right now, that's all we've got tomorrow. We'll will be some Super Smash Brothers. You know your boy at Soka is going to be making those calls. So make sure to join us tomorrow. But for right now, we'll see you later. You have a great night.